Hail the victorious dead. But we don't have long before the next battle begins. The Day 42 Horde approaches, and there's much to do to prepare. So the POD is to work on base upgrades and fortifications, and we'll then throw down a first coat of paint. And finally, I'd like to get a barracks built for our loyal soldiers. You watch my back, and I'll watch yours. Let the mission begin. So today is going to be a huge base building day, and I've got a ton of resources rolling in all of, like, the workbench. I made a bunch of paint out of the chem station there. Let's see, over here, I'm rolling on bulletproof glass blocks and forged iron out of this. I already have what I think will be most of the things that I need for today. Let's just start by kind of getting some of the blade traps down. Maybe doing a little bit of repair work down here. Also, do I have... I don't have the cobble stuff. We'll have to get more resources then for the big upgrades. And before I get too far ahead of myself here, we need to get things rewired here. Because I think things are a little bit messed up right now. Last night I moved the generator over to here, which is kind of exposed, but also kind of shielded here. So I think it'll be okay. Because it was either that or put it in here. And you know, then we'd have to have exhaust because we don't want to give our soldiers carbon monoxide poisoning. And yeah, so <laughs> a little bit of an ordeal. Anyway, guys, let's just uh, get these blade traps hooked off of that switch right there. And we'll avoid doing any sort of daisy chaining because these are definitely going to break. They're very prone to failure. Are we good here? Oh, no, I think that's a... Uh, is that a psycho or a whisperer or something? Yeah, I can hear footsteps. Who's around here? Oh! Whisperer! Come back here! Oh, he's running right up into the base! No! Asshole! Get out of here! Any more whisperers lurking around here? Or other threats that I should know about? Like, perhaps anybody with a rocket launcher <laughs> primarily is my concern here. Aha! Yes, there are a couple of whisperers out there. Let's just take care of them. Whisper is really not a huge threat these days, but I don't want them lurking around nonetheless. Very curious to me that a 12, 20 gauge shotgun does a, a significantly more damage than the 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, maybe someone uh, wasn't quite familiar with how ballistics works. Oh, got another one way down there. And then uh, the, the last thing we should probably do while we're out here, because I kind of forgot about it earlier, is um, let's see if I can find some lead because I don't know that I've seen a lead node. Okay, so white would be nitrate, black would be coal, that tan rusty color would be iron. I think lead is like a bluish color. Aha, I see one right there. Let's just run over there real quick and see if that's a lead node or... I think the nodes have been replaced in War of the Walkers. I honestly haven't... <laughs> I've done barely any mining this entire time. Interestingly, you need the lead to make the bulletproof glass. Is that like a real thing? Is there actually lead in bulletproof glass? Like they've somehow kind of fused it in there. Kind of interesting. Ooh, potato. Yeah, these... Are these nodes? Oh, these are some kind of a node. It's like a mixed node. There's all kinds of weird I stuff in it. Is this just stone underneath it? Or... Yeah, that's just like stone. Speaking of stone, I did do quite a bit of stone mining underneath the base. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Killed that zombie and I instantly get my massive speed boost because the, the armor doesn't slow me down in combat anymore. I got that urban combat book. Aha, here's some lead. This is what we need. Yeah, and last night I noticed that uh, somewhere along the way I have gotten that skill where I can one-shot the ore, I think. So get out of here. So that just makes mining like so, so much faster. I got something like 50,000 stone last night, plus a whole bunch of iron as well. And if I could just get a couple thousand lead, I think we'd be all set. We really only need it for the bulletproof glass and we only need, I don't know, 25 more blocks of it. All right, I'm pretty satisfied with that right there. Let's clamber our way out of here because I think I've already spawned in a screamer. Screamer? Yeah, I see her. Hello there. Pseudo scream looks like I don't see any zombies that spawned in. Yeah, like what's this here? Is this just another kind of mixed node of weird stuff? What even is all that? Like copper fragments and zinc fragments, which I don't even remember what those go for. Oh, for making brass, I guess. Okay, so you can just mine brass. Interesting. All right, let's shuffle back to the base and we'll continue on with repairs and upgrades. It's quite a war we've had here. Look at the losses we've sustained. Some of them have been lost twice too. All right, at this point, pretty much all the resources that we had cooking should be done or mostly done. So we'll grab the forged iron, we'll grab the bulletproof glass blocks and see if I can now craft a few more of them. What can we do now? Another 10 held back by the sand. I think 
Probably 10 would be good though. And there's tons and tons of sand rolling in over here. So yeah, give me all that and make all of the concrete mix that we can make. Oh, and then real fast, yeah, grab up all my cobble. Oh, there's some lead from the batteries. I, I figured I might scrap a few batteries because they're taking up a lot of room in the inventories. Yeah, so as far as I could tell, the concrete here that we have is like homemade concrete, right? And then the Portland concrete, like if I were to go to the hardware store today and buy some concrete, it would be Portland concrete, at least where I live anyway. And so that's like professional, like, factory grade concrete this stuff right here you know homemade not too good portland stuff that's the good stuff all right so what i would like to do to start off today is i want to knock out all of these wooden like the fire traps because we're going to need to get underneath them to upgrade the blocks behind them now that i think about it instead of the security gate here probably going to go with the railing block because then i can rep repair or replace the blocks underneath it and then everything in here just needs to be I think probably Portland concrete eventually, but we'll get it up to at least regular concrete for tonight's hoard. And because a lot of you all have mentioned it, I will say that I've done some testing offline and I, cause there's something called a fire trap or an oil slick block, I think it's called. And um, the oil slick block does burn and it does catch zombies on fire, but <laughs> the wood honestly does way, way more. And I think probably the issue there is that the, the oil slick was present in War of the Walkers probably before the fire mod was. And so that was like, that was your way of catching zombies on fire before fire mod was introduced into War of the Walkers. Okay, so that part's finished. Did I ever finish what I was doing over here? I did not, right? So we need to fix this stuff. And I need to reconnect one of these wires because for some reason, what what is this wire even going to over there? <laughs> that is totally weird. You weird me out, electric fence post. Yeah, electrical wires, they they do strange things sometimes. They're kind of buggy, but that's okay. We'll fix it up here and then we won't have to worry about it anymore. Oh wait, these actually need to be hooked off of a switch as well. So let's continue doing what we were doing there. Hook that up, hook this up, not daisy chaining anything. That should be good right there. Are these, let's just spin these up and see. Yep, that's powered, that's powered. These are powered. I have a total of six engines in here now, so we should be fine on the power draw. And then, right, take these last couple of blade traps off of that other switch and give that power. And survey says we are all juiced up now. Very good. What's my power draw? 182 out of 300. Not too bad. All right, well, conserve the fuel then. Okay, next item on the agenda is to grab the Hesco blocks. And let's see if I can get some of those, what are they called? Barbed wire, steel barbed wire. Well, there's fences and there's traps, and I'm not sure what the difference is there. But yeah, we want this steel barbed wire one right here. I'm thinking like 70 or so of those. And I'm just going to wait for those to roll in, because I'm going to set those up on top of the Hescos. All right, so starting in the front, let's knock out these old barbed wire fences that I put here purely just for demonstration purposes. And we will set in these new barbed wire fences. I don't think these are having a whole lot of utility here. Like, I don't think zombies or anyone else is going to come crawling over this, like, you know, World War Z style, you know. But I think it just looks cool. And it's, uh, it's not always about function, in my opinion. It's also about kind of form, you know what I mean? Okay, now we just have to complete the mission of doing that whole thing all the way around the base, replacing all of these old frames that we have here with Hesco's, and then building up the Hesco crenellations, and then putting all of the barbed wire fences right in the middle of them. All right, nice. That project has been a long time coming to get that finally all squared away. One little accessory project that I kind of had in mind was to put a little bit of a bumper on this fighting position right here. I'm not sure if this is going to help very much, but aesthetically, especially where we're about to paint this, I think it'll just help break up the, uh, you know, put like put, it's like a window frame, right? It's going to like put some, some frame in to kind of like box in the color and provide some contrast. And then, I don't know, you could get pretty fancy with it. I could put this railing all the way down to the front of the base and like have a nice guardrail along the whole length of it. All right, man, that looks way cooler than I thought it was gonna look. <laughs> Not providing a whole lot of function, I don't think. I mean, we'll have to see when the demos show up what that's gonna do. Probably not a whole lot, but yeah, I like it. It looks good anyway. The question kind of is, is what should that be upgraded to? And looks like we're doing great. Well, we're, we're kind of hurting on the concrete mix, but honestly, we can make so, so much of it. So I'm fine with upgrading this. 
then yeah, that kind of reminds me. These areas over here that are going to be possibly susceptible to a demo blast in the future need to be upgraded pretty much to max. All right, making good progress so far. Let's check on the concrete mix because the next big project I think is going to be getting this all 100% upgraded to concrete with probably portions of it being upgraded to Portland concrete. Oh, you know what? I was going to say I was kind of surprised that this isn't moving more quickly. We got to get the eco engine in there to see if we can get that moving any faster. I believe I do have a couple of extras. In fact, I do. Okay, now cancel all of this. We're starting over. Now only going to take 27 minutes and definitely moving a lot faster though. Okay, if that's going to be the case, I really don't feel like we have enough concrete mix to really get very far. Instead, I might try to, yeah, I took the big ugly things off. I just, you know, carved out the bottom block with the auger and let it all collapse. Like I don't even want those street lights back, but um, two steps forward, one step back sometimes in base design. Sometimes things, uh, you put it down and it just doesn't quite look right. And it takes a little bit for it to set in that you have to go back up there and <laughs> restart the whole project, right? Uh, we're going to need some more spotlights, so let's just do that, if we can, four more. This is this was the original plan, well that was fast, uh, to, to put spotlights, but then I found out that I could make the street lights, and I was like, oh, you know what, we could probably use those instead, but ultimately didn't quite look right on top of these towers. The original plan, however, was to get these brackets right here, bracket doubles, and hopefully I can place these down... Is that going to be the right spot? Yes, because I want to put the um, the spotlight directly on top of that and underneath the platform there. I can already tell this is going to be a big to-do. We got to put these up, then we got to put the spotlights in, then we got to connect them with the wire tool, then we got to orient them down toward the ground. <laughs> see, see why I didn't want to have to do this, but I, I have to do it. Okay, last one. Just got to get the spotlights hooked in. Fortunately, I think this will be a little bit easier. Fine day, isn't it? I can't complain. And then I think what we're doing is just daisy chaining everything off of that relay to this and then straight over to this and all the way around. Not the best system because if a cop just inadvertently, you know, cop vomit clipped that thing over there, we'd be kind of screwed on, in terms of lights. Everything else would turn off. I'm taking my chances, that's for sure. <laughs> and I'm not going to change it. Okay, and then the terminal end is that end over there, that that final street lamp. I gotta say, man, I am so happy that they are eliminating the wires in Alpha 21. That is gonna be one of the the few, I guess, changes that I'm really, really looking forward to. Because at this point, I can't play without the hide all wires mods. I've seen a few people that are like, kind of unhappy about that. They're probably the ones that meticulously like dig tunnels for all of their wires and they enjoy that kind of thing. I'm just not one of them. All right, we'll see what that looks like in a little bit when the power comes on. It's on the auto timer to come on at 2100, I think. All right, well, there's the bulletproof glass blocks. So at a minimum, we can start working on that. And this is a problem. This has been the incorrect block chase that have been here for like a week or two now. So take all these out. Look, I even put a freaking armor cladding on the outside without even noticing. There we go. And then we can just start squeaking in here and putting the bulletproof glass blocks in. Now, fortunately, what we can do is uh, if we get a little bit of extra, we can actually put one on the outside as well, like that. So we'll be double layering the bulletproof glass. But for now, just getting one in here is really the most important thing. Oh yeah, the lights just came on. How's everything looking out here? Pretty good. Now, now that these are powered, I think we can uh, interact with them and point them downward a little bit. Okay, I have nine more of these. Seriously, can I just get one more? I sure can. Give me one more for now. How many more can I get? Oh my goodness, I guess we're good now. What do we need here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen, plus ten is twenty-eight. That'll allow us to double layer everything at some point. All right, there you go. We're double layered on the front side, which for tonight is definitely the most important side. How's that looking? Not too bad. I like that a lot. Excellent. I kind of wonder, what what would happen, do you think? We should maybe do some testing. Ah, oh, geez, it's kind of hard to do some testing, isn't it? Okay. No, we can do this. Akavarin, you follow me and come in here, buddy. And then I want you to stand where I'm standing. And then I want to squeak out here. And I want to say, stay where you are standing. Because he's now pointing to the outside. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put some uh, blocks here on the outside. And just see if he can shoot through them. Like if I put bars here, 
Are you able to shoot through those? Because that protects us a lot more from rockets. Rockets won't go through bars, but bullets will. So let's go grab a zombie and test out my theory here. Zombie, where's the zombie? Wolf, I'll take the wolf. Come over here. So if I pull the wolf straight over here, come over here. Does Akavarin see the wolf and shoot the wolf? No, nope, Akavarin can't see through the bars. I'm hurting myself here. Okay, so that was, um, well, it's a good thing we tested it. We'll put it that way. So that just confirms it. We have, we have to basically just suck it up. If they shoot a rocket inside here, <laughs> stuff's gonna get blown up. All right, I feel we got 15 minutes. That's gonna be going throughout the night. I wanna wait until we have plenty of concrete mix before we do the big upgrade in here. Let's for tonight then. Let's see, we got the cobblestone shapes here. We should be good there. Let's get the barracks built. I have a plan to build it right over here. I always draw out my designs on paper first. Now this was a nine by nine chow hall and I'm gonna make a nine by nine like dome um, because that's like what we basically slept in a lot overseas were like structures like that. They're just tents basically. And um, I think I can recreate that shape right there. Just make it a little bit bigger. And uh, by my design, I think there should be room enough for 16 bunk beds. And of course I have, uh, I really wish I could get some more lights, but the more lights you add, the more performance takes a hit. So instead we got some mobile lights over here. Let's bring this around so we can see what we're doing tonight. All right, just back it up and hold it right there. Perfect, nice. All right, so I'm not gonna do any sort of a block by block for you right here. All I'm gonna do, I need to knock out a couple of these ladders because they're gonna be in the way. I need to knock out a couple of these top catwalk portions because we're just gonna need an alternative shape for that. So with a combination of these wedge narrows, which are the four part wedges, and the wedge 60s, which are two part wedges, plus the regular wedges, which are just, you know, the one part 45 degree angle wedge, should be able to get a nice tapered dome shape all the way to the top. All right, I had to take a bit of a break there and get some more cobblestone shapes crafted, but I've got plenty now. In the meantime, I went around and I repositioned all the spotlights to be aiming more toward the ground, so we're getting good illumination down there. So I'm using half blocks for the walls because I think that that will just give a little bit more space for the soldiers in here. And then I had to come up with, uh, there's some really good shapes and I found one that kind of flushes up a half block with the ramp block, so that looks pretty good. And I think I'll try and leave an opening here for windows, even though it's just gonna be probably prison bars <laughs> in the window. Uh, it's the best I can do for them. And I also crafted them some little storage trunks for their personal belongings. And so there it is. That's our little soldier bunker right there. These lights are really, really bright. Can I like not have those for a minute? Uh, just, yeah, okay, that's fine. Cause we need to put a sign up here that, um, hmm, what, what can we do here? Window trim top, window trim square. And this one here is just called window trim. I'm using it for the door. There probably is a door trim. I just <laughs> haven't seen it yet. Just like that. Nice. Okay, so in terms of a sign, we've got five. Well, quite honestly, I might want to put some kind of a border around this so it looks a little bit nicer. Let's just do something temporary for now. Instead of barracks, we'll do racks. Then, hmm, eventually I'll have to see if there is a trim block system that I can use on the outside here, because I don't think there is. Because what we would need is we would need a wedge narrow half block. And those simply don't exist, it seems. Yeah, so, now well, that's unfortunate. I was hoping I could put something on the edge here, but that's... Eh, It'll do for now, I guess. We're gonna get a door in here and some lights, but we can honestly work on that some other time. I think this is a good first step. Okay, so the horde base portion, good to go. The barracks, good to go. The chow hall, also pretty much good to go. The only things left to do for today are, I think we're pretty much ready for the horde here. We could just, you know, turn everything on and get some ammo and we're pretty much all set there. What we should do though, is we should do the big upgrade. We gotta upgrade all of this to concrete and then portions of it also need to be upgraded to Portland concrete. And by now I would imagine that all of it's ready in here. So actually for now, let's sort this real quick. Put away the Portland concrete mix because I don't want to accidentally upgrade a bunch of blocks to that that don't need to be upgraded to that. And let's start upgrading. Just to start off with though, gonna lay a little bit of a scaffolding around here because that just makes it easier and I'll leave it on there because probably it'll make painting a lot easier as well. 
Oh boy, except uh, it sounds like... Is this an attack over here? Oh, it is an attack. It's like an attack and they're beating up the stupid... <laughs> The, uh, the, the headstones over there. We can't have that. No, 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 no. Whoa, man. Cajun is just lighting them up. Okay, where are your Whisperer overlords? They're right over here. Hello, everyone. Please get out of here. We don't need you guys messing stuff up around here. There we go. All right, where was I? All right, yes, we are making the scaffolding. All right, the scaffolding is in. Time for the big upgrade. So now with the interior mostly done, I think the most important blocks here are basically these blocks right here. These need to go straight to Portland Concrete Mix. All right, that's it. That is fully upgraded now. How much Portland Concrete do we have left? Yeah, quite a bit, but not probably enough to do the outer part as well, I don't think. Plus, just for ease of repair, I'd like to leave this as the regular concrete anyway. All right, still pretty early on in the day. I'm a little bit starving to death. Let me get some food, some water, and we'll continue on to the painting project. Got a halfway rotten sham chowder there. That sounds delicious. And some apple juice. Mmm. Can't imagine what the aftertaste is going to be like on that one. Okay, so I've selected a basic color scheme that I want to go with for the base here. And uh, let's see how it looks first. We'll do a little bit of a test palette over here. So we're going to go with cracked sidewalk here. Of course, everyone has their own preferences when it comes to color. I have a certain color scheme that I like. There are only certain, like colors that I even like to use in the game because most of them are garbage. Just make sure we're not painting all sides. I don't want to completely run out of paint. And I just wanted to see... Yeah, this is only using one paint to paint this this whole thing. So we're actually saving a ton of paint on this as well. It's just lovely. Love it. Okay, so we got the ground level done. The, the buildings here. The buildings, including the towers, are going to be the concrete shape, which is not these. I usually use the stones large, but I think I have an opportunity to use something different that'll look kind of cool if I could ever find the damn thing. There it is, concrete wall. Let's just do a paint surface on this and ooh, yes, I like that. Also, I think the base is gonna be the same pattern like that. Yes, I think so. For now though, don't get too carried away. I might change my mind halfway through this. Oh, and you know what? What we missed uh, out on here is I actually need to rip through this bottom layer here and uh, flush up the bottom with the wall. If we're gonna be painting it, we gotta do this now before we start. It's okay, it should only take a minute or two to do this. Especially because we got the steel auger here, quality six. We could make the tungsten auger, however, I don't have enough tungsten motor tool parts or whatever it is to make one. Alrighty then, there we go. Continue with the big slap on paint job. Very nice. All right, before we get too carried away here though, let's just focus on uh, some finesse here in getting these shapes colored the way we want them. Hmm, spikes, okay, spikes I usually do in like jet black. Uh, this border here probably should be dark because I want to do the rails out of like the shiny metal color. It's the only way to color a rail in my opinion. By the way, this is called medicine cabinet. This is what this paint color is. I get that question from time to time. That one right there. And then for the grates or the, yeah, the security gates below me, we're gonna do red. We're gonna do the same thing down there. And for the poles, we'll also do red. Just a little bit of contrast. I don't like to go too overboard on the red. This might even be a little bit overboard. I used to play Roller Coaster Tycoon, and this is basically what all of my Roller Coaster Tycoon theme parks would look like. <laughs> a mixture between uh, white, black, and red. Definitely my, my color, the theme of my life, the color theme of my life. And then for the skirts, we're gonna use drop ceiling number two. And I'm just gonna suck it up and do the paint all sides on this one too. Some black TV screen for the spikes. And that's it, that's your final form for the tower. Now all I have to do, I'm gonna spend basically until the horde gets here tonight and until I run out of paint, just running around and painting everything in that same sort of a theme. It's gonna be really rough for this first pass, but it's better than nothing. All right, that is about as much as I dare to paint for one night. I need to, at this point, probably make sure that all the soldiers are positioned into defensive positions for Horde Night, and then we will start getting geared up for the Horde. All right, chiefly guys like 
Damon. Damon the Demon Slayer, I'm gonna call him. Stay where you're standing. Cajun, I think you could probably hang out over here tonight where I can hear you significantly less. Stay where I'm standing. All right, I think everyone's finally positioned up. We've got soldiers in these two corners here. We've got a soldier here. We have three on the wall there, and then we have one more melee soldier who's just gonna hang out up here. Barley, actually follow me. Come on down here in case things get really, really dicey tonight. I don't suppose they will. I've got some steel hatches. We can finally get these upgraded. Okay, stay where you're standing. 2100, let's just get some ammo and we'll call it good. Fortunately, there's not much to the Horde Knights lately. It's just all about shotgun rounds and, oh, 5.56. Five, you know what we need to figure out is what these new weapons are taking. We'll probably figure that out in the next episode. The FN Scar, like what ammo type is that taking? Probably start carrying it around too because that that range damage is so much better than what I'm using with the M60. Oh, and on second thought, I need the 20 gauge, not the 12 gauge. All right, well, I think we're ready to get into position down here. Um, hmm, generator's not on. <laughs> Probably out of fuel. I don't even have an easy way to get up here, but tell me that's the, pr the problem here. Yep, just get a refuel, turn on. Lights are good, come over here. Traps are spinning. Did we reload these with ammo earlier? I think I did. I did not. Gotta get some nine mil for that. Okay, one, two, three. Cutting it a little bit close tonight. Spent a little bit too much time painting. What's new? One, two, three, lock. Well, the base is pretty much half finished. We've still got scaffolding up. We've still got to do a whole bunch of painting, but the day 42 horde is fast approaching, so it is time to lock and load. My friends, the Horde is almost upon us. All right, before things get too hot and heavy up here, I'm gonna try to take the 30% experience card and then a 20% on top of it and see if those stack. Oh my goodness, it looks like they stack and it's gonna last for 45 minutes, wow. Make sure I got the right glasses on for this operation. I'm pretty sure I do. Oh, hello there. All right, it is time to get things cooking down there. This should be enough to light it on fire. That's good. Start bringing the heat a little bit. I'd say we're doing well enough right now. They're barely even making it past that first blade trap. Whoa, hello there. Oh, you know what we need? I've got to get the um, the extra barbed wire fences to put on, on the steps there. Okay, it should only take a second to grab these. They're right there. And Spider-Man, you need to despawn. There you go, good boy. Just like this. Don't want anybody jumping up in here. All right, let's roll, baby. We're in full swing now. Yeah, there's just no way they can make it down here. It's really, it's, this is an OP design right here. Not to mention like the soldiers helping me out up there. That's the perfect position for them too. And ultimately, hopefully that'll help them avoid shooting demos in the button. Demos in the button. Now we are, we have burned out the bot, the back two sets there. So let's light these couple sets here on fire. I decided not to go with the wood and nails and just to see if wood would be enough. And I think probably wood and nails would be optimal. All right, we're on to a new wave now. We've got cops and mutated zombies. Yep, and we're losing the blade traps down there on the far end. Nothing wrong with that. I got a whole bunch to spare. Oh, there's a demo. Our first demo right there. Just murder him before he blows up. 
taking fire. It's okay. We are fortified. This scaffolding might catch on fire. And if it does, I think it'll be okay. Bring on the demos, baby. You know what we need more of? Explosives. There we go. Set them all on fire. Light them up. Look at this. Ha <laughs> ha, eat that. Whoop, taking more fire. Luckily, got a couple near misses there. Whoa, getting more intense by the minute up here. I got, got another demo there. Just trying to aim for the, the nuts, basically. Not for the button, anywhere but the button. I'm not even sure that I could hear the demo going off if he was gonna go off. Time for the shotgun. This is the, it's gonna melt right through him in close quarters like this. Yep, the, the inferno mutated zombie is here, finally. All right, use my parkour skills. Haha, <laughs> take that, and another one. Man, they are pretty strong, aren't they? I'm just sitting here on full auto and barely melting through them. Okay, more shotgun then. That's our cue. What time is it? It's only 1 a.m. We're only halfway through the horde, and they've burned through all the fire traps and all the blade traps, except for the one, are completely destroyed, let alone not functioning anymore. Another demo here. Go for the headshots this close. Oh my god, there's so many demos now. Sitting on 59,000 XP right now. I'd say I'm doing pretty well tonight. Boop, taking a little bit of fire. Oh, we've lost a lot of the scaffolding. All right, got another demo down there. Let's see if we can take him out at range. If he blows up down there, probably not going to be as big of a deal as if he blows up down here. Oh, he's going to go off. There we go. First demo blast. We seem to have absorbed it pretty well, actually. Another one. Oh my god. When it rains, it freaking pours, doesn't it? Yeah, they're, they're pretty much coming up here unrestricted now. There's nothing holding them back except for that electric fence post. And now, and then hopefully... Okay, you can see... Oh, another blast over there. Okay, and they've dug themselves a little bit of a hole as well. Okay, you guys need to get the heck back here. I'm just blasting myself right in the face, but I think my armor is strong enough that it's not doing much. Demo! Kill. Okay, I, I, there's a demo down there somewhere. I don't know where. I want him dead, though. Just rain fire down on him. I've only got 10 more of these things. I do have the HD contact grenades, though. Whoops, try not to dive down in there. Let's see what we can do with these. God, just a cool 20,000 XP. No big deal. Yep, and we're starting to lose integrity of the barbed wire fences in front of us. We only have to hold out for another two hours, though. Two more hours, and then we get to go swimming in a sea of loot bags. I got a demo crawling up. He crawled his way through and just smashed through that barbed wire. There's a clear avenue for zombies to get up here now, except for the electric fence. That's the only thing holding them back right now. The electric fence and the 20 gauge. We're doing so much damage that it's actually blasting holes in the ground down there. That or a demo blew up down there and I didn't even see it. I have no idea, honestly, at this point. Yep, so for the next horde, priority needs to be on getting those blocks down there upgraded to steel so that they're more resistant to, first of all, my own gunfire, and secondly, the demo blast, which will inevitably occur there. Yeah, if we're not careful, they're not gonna have a way to jump through here. Look. That corridor right there, that cobblestone block, is the only thing keeping them in a nice, tight funnel up to us. We gotta make sure that nothing else explodes around here. Additionally, that hole right there has zombies in it, which is not good. Let's see if we can, ooh, ow. Let's see if we can blow them up because I don't want them digging down there. Why is it doing that? These freaking contact grenades are terrible. My goodness, there's no letting up either. There's just so many more zombies that are rolling up in here. They're way off in the distance. They're way up in here. Wow. I'm going to use a strategy of shooting at them from this direction from now on so that I can limit how much damage I'm doing to the blocks down there on the ground. Oh, yep. He jumps right up and then all of a sudden I think that's Hey 101 over there. <laughs> Blasts him with the M60 just like me. Speaking of M60 though, I'm running low on ammo. Whoa! Demo! What are you jumping up here for? Holy crap! All right, we're back to the 20 gauge then. 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes to hold. Oh my God, look at the demos down there. Why are there so many demos? Why are they just floating there too? Jeez, man, take them out. You got a button going off there. Oh man, not good. Here, can I contact grenade him? Maybe, I gotta get some close quarters. Go are you like a giant, a badass demolition? He can't even fit through here, he's so big. That kind of works out in our favor. I did not realize that there were super demos here, and it is morning. It's been morning for a few minutes. It's hard to tell right now, but we're going to work through them here slowly. 
There, things are loosening up pretty well with the explosives. Yep, that's it. And that's just some pieces of scaffolding that fell down there. Wow, look at the tunnel they made down here. Oh my goodness, it's like a bucket of loot bags. Ugh, gotta get some air. Jeez, can't breathe down there. <laughs> well, for uh, like a little bit of last minute preparation there, I think things worked out pretty well. I think next time, there isn't there an HD blade trap? Blade Trap, Blade Trap HD. Okay, we're gonna have to see if we can craft a few of those because they might last a little bit longer because once those fail and once the fire traps fail, it's uh, it's pretty tight up here, quite honestly. So we'll have to look into that more. Maybe see if we can get some tungsten spike traps or tungsten barbed wire for the next round. But anyway, this is gonna run pretty late today. So let's uh, head upstairs, stash our stuff and see if I have an eye candy anywhere. I do, good, and a learn and elixir. We'll use that in a little bit when we're doing the experience cards that we're about to get. And there's a few experience cards that are just kind of sitting up in here too. So we'll use those as well. Now that we have the 50% experience increase, what level are we anyway? 341, wow. Okay, so, eye candy in, looting goggles on, and we'll see what we get here. Okay, that's it, wow, it actually completely fully filled up perfectly, three full boxes. Oh my goodness, there's the tungsten auger right there, max level two, we don't even have to craft it. Wow, oh my god, yes, it's doing like at least like almost 20% more block damage. Excellent. All right, we can scrap. This is a wasteland treasure for how to purify water. We can scrap the rest of the schematics and things like that. Give me up the experience cards and things like that. Otherwise, nothing special in there. Look at the ammo though, just too much ammo. Way too much ammo. Gonna have to sell some of it. In this box over here, look, we've got a regular jacket, the puffer coat, but no college jacket, unfortunately. The steel roll bars mod, I think I have tungsten roll bars, so probably all set with that. Machine gunner book here, you can do 1% more damage per hit until you miss. HD dynamite, speaking my language there. And in this one, couple of books here, scrap all of those. Give me up the cards and all this experience bonuses and stuff. And otherwise, doesn't look like there's anything of any, re oh. HD time charges, nothing really special in here though. Okay, so the last thing for this episode will be to see how much experience we can get. We still have the 20% and the 30% experience cards active. Let's take down the last learning elixir that I have. Currently level 345. Let's see how many more levels we can get. Up to 371. <laughs> That's so cool. We have action skills in archery, athletics, axes, bladed weapons, thrown weapons, shotguns, rifles, and medicine and heavy armor. And reward point cards for one, two, three, and four. We have probably I don't know, a dozen or two of these. Okay, that's it for that. Whoops, I forgot to put my nerdy glasses back on after looting. Go, oh, damn it, crap. <laughs> well, while we have a little bit of a experience bonus left, let's grab up everything that's sellable here, including all that stupid ammo. We don't need any of that stuff. And jump into the sell box, give me as much of that as I can carry, sans the money. We don't need to bring that. We're gonna have plenty of that here in a second. And let's make a quick trader run. Whoop. Hang on, do we have awesome sauce and sugar butts? We have awesome sauce, do we have room for it? <laughs> Not really, just drink it now and we'll take it with us in the belly. Sugar butts as well, I'll meet you at the trader. Let's get that final little bit of experience here. Good morning, Jen. Amazing. Oh, she's got rewards like for reward. me too. Let's take whatever's the most valuable and a bundle reward right on top of that with basically nothing that we need here. How about melee mods and, oh my goodness, just terrible. Iron armor, I guess I can sell that. Quickly now, we gotta sell stuff before it all despawns. All right, and that's all I'm willing to part with right there. I'm saving the tungsten armor because I'm gonna put that on. I'll be back next week. So with that, we are up to level 390. I was wondering if we'd even crack 350 today and look at us now, almost at 400. Not only that, but we've got money for just for days. We have unlimited money right now. Nothing should hold us back. And so now I think our war effort is at its peak. This next week here, we're going to focus heavy on exploring the wasteland and finding out where the psychos are holding temp camp. And that's not hooked up anymore, so we're gonna pick it up and hop in the old fashioned way. We'll also have to set aside some time to finish upgrading the base, getting it all painted and preparing for one final horde. But anyway, my friends and fellow survivors, I think we can call it a night.
Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see right here. I hope this episode has earned your subscription, and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all, and goodbye.